uh, a video here of how to assemble one of my uh, pneumatic assist pump kits uh, version 1 and uh, I'm just going to kind of wing it here and see how it goes together okay first thing you're going to start out with you're going to start out with uh, item 2 here which is the front block and uh, you're going to need one of these item that's item 10 that's the LPR housing you need one of these. You're gonna need uh, this is item 11 on the drawing. This is the poppet, the LPR poppet. This is the lower guide rod, item one. Uh, this is the LPR setting ring, which you'll get three of those in your package, and. Uh, We'll get into what this does a little bit later. Uh, you're going to need... This is the main guide, four-way valve, core, pretty much everything component. Yeah, this is uh, item three on the drawing. Uh, <clears throat> this here isn't actually shown. This is typically part of item three. And uh, you're not really ever going to have to take this apart hopefully. Uh, so it's not shown on the drawing but it goes in here and I'll show you how that goes. Uh, this is the Hitman mod that goes on the bottom of the pump handle which uh, I guess we'll assemble a clear one so that you can see what's going on. Uh, let's see. I think that's all the oh nope we're gonna need an LPR piston. So this is an LPR piston. Actually this one's dirty. Uh let's just get one that's not. There, this one's clean. Same thing, just a clean part. That one hasn't gone through the finishing cleaning steps just yet. Uh Oh, and here is your uh, caulking rod. This is actually not a CCM caulking rod, but it's using the specs of a CCM caulking rod. Uh, but this is drilled for auto trigger. And, uh, let's see. I got you uh, some of these guys here, maybe. If I can get them out of the package. These are raw CCM coupling nuts for auto cockers. And those will fit on here, no problem. And just, just for comparison, this is a caulking rod from CCM, and this one's mine. As you can see, there's no difference at all, except for the auto trigger hole. Uh, okay, so let's get to assembling. All right, first thing you're going to do is you're going to get out a number six O-ring, uh, and we're going to start with the LPR housing, since this is kind of the biggest unit. Uh, in your package, you're going to get something that looks like this, and uh, that is the lubricate the grease that I use for all the components here. So you get a little package of that, and it is this super lube stuff. So a little bit of just put this on here. Something like that. A little bit of grease. This is actually going to be your LPR poppet face seal. And that's going to go. Get this other stuff out of the way. It's going to go down in the bottom of this and that's a flat bottom hole down there so you kind of give it a little bit of grease 
and then just kind of push it down to the bottom. And if you can't. Got to pick a better pusher. <laughs> and that's why we should probably practice this before we put it on YouTube. There we go. That works. Quarter inch hole down there, so. Okay, now you're going to put your LPR poppet piston or poppet down in there and. Uh, a little bit of grease never hurt nothing, so just put a little bit of grease on that. Drop that down in there. And now we're going to need a spring, which should be item 19. M19, this little spring here, this goes back, this goes right in there, like that. And a uh, nut goes on there, and a hollow, hollow set screw goes over the back to keep that in there. Okay, so got my thing here, and this we don't ever want it to come loose accidentally, but we want it to be removable still. So we're just gonna put a little drop of blue Loctite. That's actually probably a little bit much. So just to dabble, do you? Just put that right in there. Screw it down in, and I find it flush with the back part of this is about right, and you just let that set. All right, now that's you can see down in there that the uh, the pop there's the poppet core. Okay. So that's pretty much done. We're going to set this off to the side now and uh, we're going to assemble the four way valve, the four way core. Okay, now what I did before with this was solder it in, solder it in so that it, there was no possibility of it leaking. So now what I did was I broached an eighth inch hex through here so now we can screw it in and put some Loctite on the threads and you, this actually needs to seal so a little bit more is better on this particular thread and you want to make sure that that blue Loctite is all the way around the threads because you want that to seal the whole way now all you got to do is just Slide this in here, and tighten it up a little bit, and we'll adjust the wrench just to make sure. Now you don't want to kill this, but you want to make it snug. I, I'm going to note right now though, before you air this up, after you do this, before you air it up, you should wait at least one day for that Loctite to harden up and make sure that that seal is as good, you give it as good a chance as possible to actually seal. Alright, now we're going to put the springs for the piston, or for the uh, pop valve, in, or the, uh, yeah, the piston. So, let's see. Uh... You're going to need 10 of these springs. And you're going to stack them up in such a way that 
I don't know if you're going to be able to see that, but you see it's kind of dome shaped, kind of spring, it's kind of like a spring washer. I'm sure you've seen it in other regulators. It's the same basic thing. And what you want to do is you want to put the wide end down and then the narrow end down. And then the wide end and then the narrow end. And the wide end narrow. Wide narrow. Wide narrow. I got two extras. Okay. So you can kind of see that kind of they kind of go together like that and the wide parts will be on the bottom and on the top so that they have a good so that the piston has a good seat to seal on, or a seat to sit on, for the spring seat. Okay, so, I'm just going to put that in there. Kind of jiggle them on. There you go. That's pretty much done. Now, we're going to put in the O-rings into the piston. And that is going to be a... number 12 and a what was my numbers here that was my numbers <laughs> sorry about that and number 10 that's what I thought. Just, man, just wanted to make sure before I lied to you. So, the best way I found to do this is kind of fold it up until you get it to kind of look like that. And then you just shove it in the earring hole in the groove and kind of push it in and it just pops right in. And I'm going to take a little bit of lube, put on a Q-tip. Just kind of put some lube on that O-ring air. A little bit of lube. Kind of smear it all over this O-ring. And they're all over the piston. A little bit, a little bit of extra won't hurt, but not too much. Okay, so then this kind of slides, this slides right on top of the spring stack, and it'll kind of sit there like that. Uh, I'm going to put on the other O-rings, the other number 10 O-rings on the shaft here. Just going to pop on. Okay, so those are on. I'm not going to bother lubing them right now, not until they go into the handle. It's just going to make a mess. Uh, I guess now what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, I'm going to show you why this LPR setting ring, I give you this LPR setting ring. Um, what this does is this sits inside of the housing over top of the piston like this. And it doesn't actually impede the movement of the piston. But what it does is lets you tighten down this uh, this uh, core into the into the housing and prevent it from moving. What I've noticed is if you don't prevent it from moving during play, the LPR tends to screw out, and you will start having strange problems like not recocking or something like that. And all you have to do is reach in and tweak this up a little bit but it's much easier if you just put some pressure on those threads and that'll hold them from moving you could also use a drop of uh, the purple Loctite the 222 MS that I provided in the box on the threads once you figure out where you want it exactly but uh, 
to get the right pressure since I don't know what, exactly how your system is going to work all these are oversized when you put it in it's not going to give you any pressure out of the LPR what you have to do is take them out and take some sandpaper and sand them down just a little bit at a time uh, I, I noticed that uh, five thousandths of an inch can be the difference between not quite enough pressure and just the right amount so it's just real real easy just a couple of swipes on your uh, on your sandpaper and then put it back in and try it and if it's too too low and a couple more swipes on your sandpaper put it back in and try it it's kind of a, uh, it's something that you don't want to have to do a lot of times but once you have it, once you did it once right you don't you shouldn't have to do it ever again so that's what this is in here for I'm not going to actually sand this down since I'm, this is just I'm just illustrating how this goes together but this should just drop right in there fits right in there you see it sits on that lip and then this screws right in here and that's that's tight that's tight down on the setting ring and you'll see that it's just about flush the uh, where the threads end and that this hex starts is just about flush with the tip of the LPR housing that's how you know you're pretty much all the way out um, okay next part here I guess we'll show you how to put it together uh, let's see I got an extra ram laying around here I'll show you how to get the ram on and everything. Okay, so we'll show you how to put, assemble the O-rings into this first off. Now this is going to need uh, 003 O-rings. Uh, this is the same size O-ring that's on Cocker three-way shafts. So you might have some of these laying around in your Cocker kit, but I will provide some in the package. You're going to need two of those. And what we're going to do is, oops, and we're also going to need some set screws. So it gets some nice stainless steel, eighth inch long set screws. And what you're going to do is you're just going to lube these up just a little bit, just so they don't dry out and dry rot over time. Just a little bit on your finger, rub it, rub it in there. And don't even need any more there. Just kind of shove them in that, put them in that hole there, get them kind of started, and push them down to the bottom. That's going to be kind of tight, but that's okay. All you're trying to do is make a seal so that whenever, you, so that your uh, shaft doesn't leak. So. And then you take this small set screw and it's best I found it's best to just kind of like unscrew it a couple of times until you feel it go aligned to the threads and then you can tighten it up and just again this is another thing that you don't really have to kill it you just get it in there kind of snug and you'll see you can actually see on the clear ones here, which is kind of nice, that you can that you have a good seat on that O-ring. You don't want to tighten it down so much that the O-ring extrudes through the little hole and into the uh, into the bore here. That's that's no good. But uh, you also don't want it so loose as to leak past the threads. So it's kind of a fine fine thing but again once you once you have it once you did it once you probably won't have to do it again so, same thing on this one see uh, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that but down at the bottom of the threads down here you see as it gets tight that's tight that's how tight it needs to be and uh, okay so now we're going to put on the hitman mod which uh, you can play without it it doesn't really matter but I, I pretty much guarantee that once you play 
a couple of games with this on it, you won't never go back to trying to pump it like a normal pump. Especially if you were a, uh, a convert from a regular gun to a pump. If you've been playing pump all your life or all your paintballing career, then maybe you'll still like it the other way. But Okay, so we need one inch stainless steel screw. It goes up through the bottom. Now it only catches by a couple threads, but there's really not a lot of force on this other than whenever you pull it back and there's really nothing except the spring pushing it forward so you don't really need a lot of threads. But just put it in there, screw it in, again just snug, doesn't, you don't need to kill it. And uh, let's see, now the uh, <clears throat> fittings. These are uh, standard 1032 fittings. You can get them pretty much anywhere. I, I buy mine from Clippard. Uh, and they just screw right into these back ports here. They, uh, I'll show you this. They have an O-ring underneath each one, so it should seal pretty easily. And, uh, let's see. Little tiny wrench. These are quarter-inch hexes. And then just get a little bit snug there, and that's all you need. Yeah, and that's a little bit snug. That's all you need. Uh, I'm also going to provide you with some top hats. I think that's what they were called. I call them top hats. These will go over top of your tubing. Let's see if I got an example tube. So you put your tubing on, something like that, all the way down, and then just drop that on there, push it on until it fits, and now that tube won't come off. Okay. So, okay, now, what's left? Uh, okay, I'll just show you how to put this on here. Uh, I've already pre-red pre Loctited this uh, set screw you know, onto, into the body of this, and so that should never come out. If you need to get it out for some reason, I left the uh, Allen keyhole on the outside, and you'll just heat this area up with a lighter or blowtorch or whatever you heat gun whatever you like heat it up and it'll come out eventually it's it, if you are trying real hard then it's not hot enough all right but uh we're just going to put actually i'm not going to put anything on this one right now but this here guy is the ccm is the ccm adapter and yeah, that just threads right in there like that and you might have to depending on how your alignment ends up you might have to come out a half a turn or something like that so that your auto trigger hole lines up with your uh, lines up correctly on the body no big deal again normally I would put something uh, since this shouldn't move I would put blue Loctite on it. We'll just go ahead and put some blue Loctite on it. Why not? And again, this this is one of those uh, places where just a dab will do you. You just want it to be... You just want to keep it from moving. You don't want to... 
anything crazy. So, we lock tight on there. And I know from this one here is going to have to be out about a quarter of a turn. That's probably about the right orientation. Okay. So now putting on the uh this is this is a little bit tricky here. This is like putting on the ram here is a little bit tricky. What you have to do is you have to put the ram on first. You put the ram on first. And you kind of get you kind of want the uh and the fittings to be facing out and you, and you kind of have to align it with the hole so that the hex doesn't interfere with that because this is going to be very very close to this whenever we put it together okay so we're going to put some more o-rings on here these are the 113 o-rings so you can put one on here uh, a little bit of grease. Just, just dab. And now this, like I said, is going to be really close. Put it in Minor there. interruption there. Okay, so put a little bit of grease on this ring here. And now this is a very close fit, like I was saying. This here, you screw this in here to approximately the position you want it. Something like that. And this should slide in. And if it's tight, you might have to spin it around or trim. There we go. Spin it around and get it in there. Or uh, I've also heard that... Uh, one of the customers had to end up filing a little bit of the back side of his ram off just a little bit so that it would fit in there. I, they should fit, but uh, I can't guarantee the accuracy of, their, of the uh, other manufacturer's measurements. So, okay. Anyhow, on to the lower guide rod here. And we don't want to, this is another thing that we don't want to come out. So, a little bit of blue Loctite, and we'll just thread that into the bottom hole. And it might be a little bit tight, that's by design. What you can do is just take your uh, screw that's supposed to go on the bottom of this. Gonna get that started. Use that to help you tighten in that bottom rod. And then this will just come out pretty easily. So <clears throat> now you got this pretty much all set up. I'm going to put a little bit of grease on the three-way there. And I just put just a really light smear on the lower guide rod, uh, just in case there's any little bit of touching anywhere. You just don't want to, just want to keep it from wearing out or anything like that. Uh, okay, now we're going to need the pump handle return springs, which are like this. And they are about, they should be about the same stiffness as a uh, CCM standard pump return spring, about a pound. And that just slides right in there. You see it's a pretty free fit. That's good, that's what you want. And then you'll just slide slide this into there. And you're almost home free. Now you just take this screw here that you I use to help me uh, screw in the bottom tube 
and you're going to put a little bit of purple Loctite on this. And the reason we're using purple Loctite is because purple Loctite is actually a low strength thread locker and you want these threads to come loose before those threads back there come loose. So again, just a dab will do you. And slide that back down through there. Now this screw is the only screw that uh I can't see you got a little bit of purple Loctite on the lower guide rod, that's no good. Uh, just clean it out real quick. That's why I just that's why I say dab will do you because you don't want to get it places you don't actually want it. So actually this time here we'll, we'll try this. Put just a little bit on the internal threads and wipe off the extra. Now that super lube this kind of uh, it sticks pretty good to surfaces that you put it on, so I didn't really wipe it all off there just by wiping it. So, again, dump spring, dump return spring, put this in here, see it's moving. Now, this pump arm isn't attached like a standard pump arm. The only thing that's holding that in now is going to be this bottom screw, and that is actually going to determine your pump position or your forward, pump forward position and this one here is pretty bad pretty far off okay okay so that was a minor little problem there this particular lower guide rod was a little bit long so I just shortened it that's why I uh, that's why I kinda like the, having these uh, assembling them for you guys so if there's any little issues like that that would be a major problem if you don't have a lathe but for me that's just two minutes on a lathe and just fix it so Right there, just like that, and that's the other reason I actually put these. I'm putting this together right now for you, in case there's any assembly issues that I didn't foresee, and uh, just to make sure everything's going to work right for you. So let me go like that. Put a little touch of purple octite on here again, just a little bit. Go like that. Down in there. Of course, I left one. Allen key over here. Okay. So. There we go. That's right. Now, once that's attached to the gun, you'll be able to dial in the position, the forward position, just by screwing this, in, this bottom screw in or out. As you can see, it kind of you just kind of want it something like that, and then that's about all the movement you need. And you let that set overnight, and uh, it all, let all the Loctite set up, and you should be good to go. So there you go. Uh, let's see. Thing here. Let's check on mine. I'll <laughs> just do it dead directly. Okay, so pumps in the forward position, so the lower tube's getting air, so the lower tube is getting the lower tube should be going back. Just like that. And then the upper tube should be your pump. And of course, I give you longer tube, longer uh, hoses than that. This is just, it's just a quick mock-up, something, something like that. And there it is. And uh, when you go to order, 
These, uh, these are all raw, by the way. These are all raw aluminum. I have one brass, one brass one in case you're interested in a brass one. But this run was mostly all aluminum, so everything's anodizable. It's all 6061 aluminum. Uh, so if, whenever you order them, you can. I either I have this light blue cocker hose. I have orange. I got some clear. I got red and black and some tape for some reason. So if you have a red gun or whatever, you can pick your pick your hose colors out of those. And uh, I'll send you probably about a foot something because obviously I have plenty. So I'll send you about a foot of that with it also so that you can uh, tailor the tube length to whatever you need. And uh, whenever you do this on your gun for the first time, I suggest you leave the tubes really, really long because, like I said, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to check, set the LPR pressure by removing the uh, cap by removing the cap and sanding that uh, little piece down. So to remove the cap, all you need to do is degas your marker, of course, and take this bottom screw out, drop that out, and you'll actually be able to pull this off while everything is still attached if your hoses are long enough. And you take this out. Come on. And you'll be able to adjust this spacer until you get the right LPR pressure. Oh, we're getting tight. Oh. Piston. So you just go like that, and then of course this is really a little bit too short, but you'll be able to slide that back on there, something like that. Get it in there. Drop your screw jack back down the bottom hole, and then readjust the position. You can kind of look at the. Now you can actually do this by ear whenever you're doing this, uh, when it, if you buy a black one. Uh, you just just keep screwing this in until you start to hear it hiss. It'll hiss a little bit. And uh, let me see, I, I can probably show you that. So here's my marker, and I'll just hopefully I won't. All right, you'll have to excuse the leak in my lower fitting, but. Okay, so your yours is gonna be pulled out something like that. And just doing it by ear, you can you'll start to hear it. You hear that leak? That leak is it trying to activate the RAM. 
So then you just come out one or two turns, something that you feel comfortable with so that it resets every time. You don't want to be on the hairy, hairy edge, you know, like something. And then you hear it leaking all the time. So you just want to come off a couple of turns and then it'll work just fine. Okay, so uh, that's a quick overview of the assembly of the uh, pneumatic assist pump kit version 1 and uh, some options on hose color and all that happy stuff. And everything here, like I said, everything's raw so that you can get it anodized. Figuring these are probably going to be going mostly on project markers. So, all right. There you go.